the human body requires two main things in order to live and perform fuel if you like the first one is food including water fuel for growth regeneration and activity the second which is arguably more important is air or at least a constituent of air oxygen if oxygen's limited so is our ability to perform to move around without the required amount of oxygen being processed by our lungs muscles can't perform our endocrine system responsible for most bodily functions shuts down and the brain will die in fact more than five minutes without oxygen and most people most living things for that matter would be dead and as we all know something which we've all experienced at some time or another if someone chokes you or puts the hand over your mouth the amount of air that you can get into your lungs is diminished and you feel yourself getting weaker and weaker in a very short space of time now believe it or not the internal combustion engine works on very similar principles in order to be able to combust the fuel in the cylinders efficiently it needs to be mixed with oxygen and if it doesn't get enough oxygen combustion is incomplete and the power that that engine is capable of producing diminishes to the point where it will eventually stop working now the amount of air that can get into your engine is governed by the air box which is protected by an air filter the air filter being responsible for keeping dust grit and other contaminants out of the engine which might cause excessive engine wear now most manufacturers when they're building a bike or a car have a very limited budget for these sorts of parts in all probability just pennies so they use the cheapest air filters that can possibly get the hands on and that usually means a paper element filter they do the job adequately but to some extent they do if you like strangle the bike they make it more difficult for the bike to breathe in and get the necessary oxygen that it requires just like someone putting the hand over your mouth or strangling you it's the same effect they are quite restrictive but that's not the worst of it this type of paper element filter is an exercise in diminishing returns the more foreign bodies it collects in order to protect your engine the more restricted it becomes and slowly over time probably not that you would notice but slowly over time your engine performance comes down and so that paper element filter has to be replaced and then this entire cycle starts again not only that the way that the air gets into the filter usually by what is known as a snorkel the air box cover is usually designed to keep out water so that in itself is also quite restrictive now the answer to this the first part of call for most people is what's known as a performance filter and what is usually referred to as a bell mouth although that name doesn't really describe the modern version of what it is it's a name that's stuck from days gone by now all air filters work on a basic mechanical principle paper element filters being the most basic in the case of a paper element filter what you effectively have is a solid wall of filtration material with tiny holes punched through it these holes been large enough to allow air molecules to pass through but small enough to stop most detritus and debris from going through with it the problem is that dirt that it's designed to trap eventually clogs those tiny holes up so the air can't pass through it as effectively and even with a new filter at higher engine speeds the amount of suction required to pull that air through in sufficient quantities actually pulls the power levels of the engine down because some of the energy that the engine is actually producing is actually been put into drawing the air in that the engine requires to function a performance filter works on a very different principle most people assume that because it allows more air through more freely the holes are bigger so dirt can get through and so the filter is bad for your engine that's not the case as i say it works on a different principle performance filters are made up from a cotton material usually a cotton gauze thousands of fine cotton strands woven together with gaps in between to allow the air through but and here's the clever bit each of those strands is composed of thousands 
of cotton fibers and those fibers sort of branch off like a tree branch from each strand they all sort of crisscross across each other but they're not fixed in place now as the engine runs the exhaust and inlet valves open and close hundreds of times a second and this causes what is known as induction pulses which effectively makes these cotton fibers vibrate allowing them to completely capture any debris and stop it from going through the filter whilst still allowing the air to pass through the manufacturers then take it a step further and all these fibers are coated with an oil like substance it's a sort of a glue that never quite sets and the instant any particle of dirt hits that glue on those fibers it becomes permanently trapped on the fiber but the fiber is still able to move and allow the required amount of air to pass through the filter in essence the filter doesn't clog up it's not an exercise in diminishing returns like a paper filter is the way performance air filters are made hasn't changed much in the last 50 years with most manufacturers resting on their laurels and just sticking to a tried and trusted formula but I believe that DNA filters a relatively new name in air filters has actually taken the basic principles of performance air filters and taken them to the next level. DNA used the very own brand of organic surgical grade non-woven cotton gauze. A hybrid gauze which they say is much stronger than the competitors. They take four layers of this gauze and then sandwich it between two 5000 grade series aluminium mesh. The whole thing is then pleated to increase surface area and folded into a shape suitable for the application on your bike. In this case of course we're talking about the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And whereas a lot of manufacturers will simply glue on the end cap and the inlet piece, this whole assembly is introduced at the moulding stage. So the end cap and the mouth become one with the assembly. So there's no danger of anything becoming unstuck, there's no danger of any gaps where they've been fastened together effectively the whole assembly becomes one piece now the interceptor version was created as a joint collaboration between dna and s and s to work in conjunction with their high performance big bore kits for the interceptor and the continental gt and i believe for you guys in the states the s and s high performance filter is the same filter sold under the s and s name this air filter boasts a 42% increased air flow over the standard OEM filter while still providing a 98 to 99% filtering efficiency if installed in conjunction with their stage 2 airbox cover or bell mouth as I like to call them. This can be purchased as an optional extra or you can buy the kit with both included. All in all, it's quite an impressive piece of kit. Now these filters will quite literally last a lifetime of your bike, providing the cleaned periodically. And that can be done quite easily at home using the DNA air filter service kit, which again, needs to be bought separately. Now I'm not going to insult your intelligence by giving you a blow by blow account of putting one of these filters on your bike. It's just an air filter change. The only difference being that once you've installed your new DNA filter if you've opted for the stage 2 kit the plastic snorkel is replaced with their airbox cover this obviously gives the filter the ability to breathe properly by providing it with a much wider surface area at the entrance into the airbox now one thing I will mention that no one else who's installed these on video here on YouTube has mentioned is that your ECU needs to be acclimatized to the new filter you shouldn't really just jump on the bike and ride off when you've installed it all modern bikes since 2015 should be fitted with a learning ECU and any changes like a new exhaust or a new air filter require adjustments which the ECU will make automatically but it takes time. Once your air filter installation is complete start your bike up and allow the engine to run. Do not rev it. 
just allow the engine to idle for between 10 and 12 minutes. It needs to go through the cycling of curled start up to normal operating temperatures. This will allow the ECU to sample what is going on via the O2 sensors at the exhaust headers and make all the necessary adjustments and corrections required for the new air filter. If you rev the engine or ride it immediately after fitting it, this will not give your ECU sufficient time to acclimatise to the new situation. So resist the temptation to rev it. After your 10 or 12 minutes, while the engine is warm, take the bike for a gentle run just to check everything's okay. Two or three miles is all that's required. After that, you can ride the bike normally. If, however, you encounter some problems, coughing, spluttering, uneven tick over, anything like that, allow the bike to cool down and start that process again. It's unlikely that you will cause any damage by not following this procedure, but the bike might not run optimally until it's had the opportunity to acclimatize properly. Bear that in mind. Now, I know the burning question on everyone's mind now is what difference does this performance filter make to your bike? Well, one thing it certainly isn't going to do is turn your 47 horsepower Interceptor or Continental GT into a super bike. It does make some subtle and very pleasant differences, which I'll get onto in a moment, but what you should consider a performance filter like this DNA filter to be is a performance foundation, a cornerstone. We all like fiddling with our bikes and tweaking things here and there to get just a little bit more performance out of it. And at the end of the day, it's not really about getting more performance out of your bike. It's about enjoying the process of doing it. It's the satisfaction of making it just that little bit better even if it's only in your eyes but that process has to start with your air filter because nothing else that you do to this bike is going to significantly improve it if the bike can't breathe properly that original oem paper filter is going to restrict anything else that you try to do whether it be performance exhausts or anything else but here are my initial thoughts on the difference this filter makes without making any other modifications throttle response is noticeably more receptive to your touch especially at lower revs the engine feels just that little bit more free and unencumbered a little bit more willing to rev. Now DNA say that this will add a few horsepower even without any other modifications but to be quite honest anything from one to six horsepower your average rider is going to be very hard pressed to notice it. The biggest difference that I've seen is acceleration between sort of three and a half and five five and a half thousand revs it does feel quicker and much stronger but in my eyes it seems to be more an increase in torque than power but the most glorious thing about this dna setup is the induction roar as you may have noticed from that opening clip it makes the bike sound absolutely fantastic is it a worthwhile modification yes i think long term it will be don't forget you're taking some of the strain off that engine and you're allowing it to breathe a bit better so i do expect to see a very slight improvement in fuel consumption i will report back on these things at a later date when i've had more time to digest what's going on right i'm very conscious of the time once again thank you for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful if you have please leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will leave a link to dna's website for this filter in the video description down below for any of you that would like to have a look i'll be back next week although i don't have a clue what i'm doing yet so until then please ride safely and i'll see you soon